Hi, everyone. I hope you've had a great conference so far. I'm Louis Prensky. I'm a uh, senior product manager working on our AI skills. And I'm here today with Andrew. Hey, how's it going? Andrew Kunji, Chief Information Security Officer here at Appian. Been here for about three years. Excited to talk to you about this today. Yeah, so today we'll be talking about AI, of course. Um, some of the challenges that it brings with data privacy and security, and then how Appian addresses those challenges. Uh, but first, help me get to know everyone in the audience a little bit better. Um, so could you all raise your hand if you've ever used ChatGPT? Okay, pretty much everyone. Now, raise your hand again if you read the privacy policy or the terms of service before you did. Okay, a few. And we'll just have to, to trust you on that if you did keep your hand raised. Um, so we know that there are risks with using AI, and yet we're drawn to using it. Why is that? Of course, it's because there's such a wide range of possibilities with the technology. There are plenty of traditional applications of AI, such as helping make intelligent decisions, like which team do I route this incoming email to? Or, based on the context of 100,000 historical loan applications and their outcomes, should I approve or deny this new loan? Uh, you can personalize your customer's experiences. So if I compare the trends of this customer to the trends of similar customers and their outcomes, can I tailor an experience or an offering that's more likely to make this customer buy? You can predict future needs, such as financial forecasting based on macroeconomic data, or maybe you scale your operations through AI. That might be automatically replying to common customer support requests, or maybe your HR department uses AI to parse resumes and match the extracted data to job requirements. And now, the idea of AI for innovation and creativity is taking off in large part because of generative AI. Today, you can automatically generate content for blogs, social media, while adapting the tone to fit the medium and your brand. Or maybe you can take data from across your enterprise, say performance metrics, um, costs, and provide high-level summaries in rapid fashion. And so while there are risks with AI, which we'll talk about later today, of course, we're drawn to it because of the range of possibilities that it delivers. And the examples that I presented just now just scratch the surface. There's applications for AI across use cases and across industries. And because AI can tilt the balance of com competitive advantage, we must pay attention to it be aware of the risks and the challenges so that we can leap ahead rather than being left behind. So there is no AI without data. It doesn't matter whether you're training a small classification model or a massive large language model. Data is the foundation for AI models. And so data privacy is fundamental. Now, data privacy is constantly shifting and evolving there's been exponential growth in the amount of data that's generated, and that includes personal, private, and transactional data. Globalization, of course, means that data flows globally, and yet every region has different regulations and standards. There's also been a rise in the amount of uh, technologies that generate different data, which of course introduces different uh, business opportunities, but also different risks for data brief breaches and privacy infringements. There's a growing awareness among the, the public of this uh, issue with data privacy as well. Consumers have greater demand than ever for control over how their data is generated, how it's stored, and what it's used for. And governments worldwide are enacting or updating uh, regulations for data privacy. Um, we all have to pay attention to this evolving landscape or we can risk serious financial or legal consequences. Now, I've spoken with many customers who have their own policies for AI. Even at Appian, we have our own policy for how our employees interact with OpenAI and ChatGPT. We take our responsibility seriously to protect our customers, our role as a public company, our technology and trade secrets, and also our employees. Now, I thought this situation was summed up nicely in a recent Reuters article titled The Privacy Paradox with AI. And I love the language they use here saying, AI's insatiable appetite for extensive personal data to feed its machine learning algorithms has raised serious concerns about data storage, usage, and access. 
The article goes on to describe high profile lawsuits, escalating public concern, and new legislative actions. And this is the paradox. We want and need to take advantage of AI technology, and yet we have to contend with these risks and concerns. So how do we do that? Well, Appian combines AI with data and process. Together, these critical components allow you to tap into transformational value, all while addressing your privacy and security concerns. Let's start by looking at data, which we've already established is the foundation for AI. In Appian, you can unify your data with our data fabric. Data fabric allows you to access your data from across the enterprise using a prod set of pre-built and standards-based connectors. With data fabric, you can connect to your data and keep it up to date without requiring you to move it or to migrate it. Data fabric allows you to create relationships across your enterprise, not just for data in one source, but for data in many sources. And that allows you to break down data silos and create rich data sets with more information. And more data means better AI outcomes. Data Fabric also allows you to work with many different types of data. That means that you can be ready for AI, any AI challenge, whether it be image recognition, uh, text classification, document extraction, or even content generation. And since we're focused on data security here, I'd like to highlight one more key feature of our data fabric. Once you've brought your data together, you can apply security controls at a granular level. Now, this is a feature that's really unique to Data Fabric, which is using your data to secure your data. Appian puts you in control because AI can't misuse data that it doesn't have any access to. Now, let me give you an example that used our recent feature to chat with records called Records Chat. So, imagine we have John Doe's doctor here catching up on a lot of work after a long day at her practice. She can ask to summarize her patient's recent history. And with our new records chat feature, Appian can access the data in that patient's record and its related records and use generative AI to provide a concise summary. Now that's a fantastic time savings for our doctor. Now let's imagine another doctor at the same practice, but someone who doesn't ha shouldn't have access to the patient's information. This isn't their patient after all. If you're using standard generative AI models, they don't really have um, an understanding of these security concepts. However, when you use generative AI in conjunction with Appian Data Fabric, we, you get the benefit of AI while preserving data security. Now, Data Fabric allows you to access data across your enterprise. It allows you to create rich data sets that can be used in conjunction with AI using a range of data types and it puts you in control with row-level security. Now, let's take a look at process. AI can do great things, but not in isolation. Process enables mixed autonomy, which is humans and AI working together. Process is how you put AI to work, turning insights into action. Now, imagine you want to automate a document classification or a document routing use case. You might worry about whether you can trust AI on its own to get the answer right. But with process, you can check AI's work. When it's working well and with high confidence, you can bypass any human reconciliation and take full advantage of automation. But when it's low confidence, you can easily bring in human oversight so a human can review the AI's answer and confirm whether it's right or not. Process lets you control the decision flow. You control the coordination between people and your AI technology. And sometimes the fact that humans can be brought into a process makes all the difference when deploying AI with confidence. Process also keeps you in control of where AI is used and for what. In cases where there's low risk of a wrong answer, you can shoot for high automation. But as the risk of a wrong answer or a hallucination increases, you can simultaneously increase your level of human oversight amongst the process, or you can choose not to use AI at all in some cases. When you build your process in Appian though, you get to make these decisions. And this applies to more than just the inherent business risks of any technology solution. 
The recently passed EU AI Act, for example, actually imposes a risk-based framework on where AI can be used and for what applications. Now, there are some practices where the use of AI technology is banned altogether. Then, there are others that are designated as high risk, say, using AI in uh, product safety for medical devices or in law enforcement use cases. And then, of course, there are medium or low risk applications, and fortunately, many scenarios fall here. Applying AI in these high risk scenarios is, brings significant obligations for both vendors creating these technologies and organizations rolling them out to their own customers. Managing AI in process, though, allows you to choose your level of associated regulatory obligations. And we help you keep track of where your AI is used within your applications. If you build an AI skill object in Appian, say, for example, to extract data from incoming invoice documents, in one click, you can see in every process in which that AI skill is used. And for any of those processes, you can see which instances have been run, who ran them, and what data they processed. Process applies governance to AI. You can decide when to apply human oversight. You control where AI is used to manage risk, and you can audit how AI is used so that you can stay in control. Now, we're entering a new era of AI due diligence. If you're researching vendors or if you're a partner responding to an RFP, these are the types of questions you're going to be dealing with. How is my data being used with AI within the solution? How do you coordinate between humans and AI? Do you send my data to a third party? I've been working on AI features at Appian for over four years, and uh, two years ago, or maybe even a year ago, we rarely saw AI-specific questionnaires like this from our customers and partners. However, we've been seeing them more and more, and I do expect this to continue as more organizations look to leverage this technology while still uh, managing risks and rolling it out responsibly. Appian enables security, privacy, and governance for AI, all within our unified platform. And now, I'll hand it off to Andrew to talk more about our security offerings. Thanks, Lewis. So I saw a lot of hands raised earlier for folks that have tried out ChatGPT. Uh, one question that I'd ask is, how many of your organizations have already figured out what your strategy is going to be for AI? Not a lot of hands, right? Everyone's still trying to figure it out. So with that, I wanted to perhaps start with what are the security trends, but think of this as advice on maybe how you are going to make your selections happen. So this uh, list is the Appian uh, top security trends in the, in the industry, and this comes from you know sources like Gartner, OWASP, a lot of the security expert, experts. We've boiled this down into what we believe are the most impactful areas of security for this year. And you see AI is number one on the top. So we know it's going to bring a ton of agility, it's a lot of power to your missions, depending on how you apply it, just like Luis just talked about. The biggest concern is what type of data you're putting into it. How many of your organizations have already published an AI policy? Any hands? I see a couple hands, all right? So we're still on this journey. So I'd, I'd start with a piece of advice and say, let's start with ensuring that you talk to your security officer and get a policy on how you're going to use AI. Which uh, of the AI vendors are you allowing to be used within your organization? We talked about privacy and regulatory response. Emerging guidance, like every month within every quarter, we're seeing multiple pieces of guidance come out. The next compliance framework to come out is just around the corner. So think about how you're going to be able to uh, meet those regulatory requirements or how you can work with a partner like us, Appian. Uh, we've actually got a number of certifications. I think 28 at this point. A little shout out to my trust team over here uh, who, who manages those 28 certifications around the world. Uh, digital supply chain. So when you're working with a vendor, what's the lineage of this uh, AI? You know that we have a great partnership with AWS. Highly trusted. With our certifications on top of that, it's rock solid. Private AI is the way to go, especially for business use cases. Consolidation is the next piece. So we're thinking about what, what AI are we gonna allow within our organizations? We have sensitive data, critical missions. 
I had urged you to think about a system that you could broker that through. A data fabric, perhaps. Lots of control on those objects. Who has access to them? Resilient platforms. Zero trust is in there. That's sort of like a bad word in the security industry. No one wants to say it. We're going to talk about that a little bit later and how AI can apply to that as well. The last piece here is about awareness and then making sure that everyone in the organization has to use the AI safely. With Appian, you can do all of these things on your journey. So we talked about secure AI. How are we going to do it? When you do this with Appian, you're building on top of your data, your processes that are already secure within our platform. With our AI, you're going to be able to layer that on and ensure that you know where it's going. The data that goes in with the context that goes in and the answers that come out and the models that come out, those are yours. Those aren't ours. If you go into a larger vendor, that's going to go into the global ecosystem. Maybe that is part of your use case. That is absolutely a great choice depending on the use case, depending on the context. But for the majority of our customers, you know, sensitive data, private data, this is extremely uh, important that you work with uh, a provider that has a, a very, very strong uh, story here. So the other piece is uh, when you are working with Appian, you know that you're within your own secure isolation bubble. Your data in all that context stays yours just as I mentioned. So, talked about being very, very secure, very, very scalable. The new epics that's coming, uh, we're going to be able to scale to hundreds of millions of processes very soon. Uh, 28 certifications around the world. We're working with governments, financial institutions, insurance. It is uh, a mountain of compliance that we're, we're dealing with. 20 different certifications, some of the most highly secure workloads, including FedRAMP High, DOD IL-5. You heard some about some earlier about how our features are now available there. Reliability is also important. So we talked about resiliency. That's going to be very important in terms of depending on the context and the use case and what it's allowed to be integrated into. We talked about maybe not for medical use cases or law enforcement. You need extremely high uptime if AI is deeply integrated into your model. So you know that we have great reliability, great track record of it. So again, can you trust your AI? What data from your business are you going to put into this model here versus a private model? So if you're already an Appian customer or a prospect, I'd urge you to go with our private AI. When you use our data fabric with all of your private information, you can ensure that the object and access models, so who has access to the critical fields within your applications, is the way that you've intended it. And that's also the way that it's going to interact with the AI, depending on that user's context, depending on the process's context as well. With our model, I mentioned when you put data into it and the context into it, Everything that comes back out is still your data, still your context. Now, it's not all about how secure this AI is, but also, depending on the mission and the use case, how you connect into that model. So we actually have a number of other features, the Appian Protect features. I'm going to talk about these at a very high level today. but. All of these features come with our secure platform. As I mentioned, you know, it's ISO, it's FedRAMP. You need to be able to simplify your security. When you work with us, we're taking on more of that security burden. You're not doing that certification process. But when you layer on Appian Protect, you get to choose how you access that data. A little bit more on that here. So this is kind of the breakdown of the Appian Protect features. So when you look at the essential tier, we're talking about network connectivity. So in your zero trust for your organization and how you connect to your data, extremely important. Is it completely private? If you're in the DOD, do you have to traverse the BCAP? Make sure that you're connecting in securely. Under the advanced tier, we also have data encryption, log streaming, and other resilient services. 
very important, right? So the data in there, bringing your own key, great feature to, to, to work with there. And then finally, with enterprise security, if you wanna ensure that we are always secure, this also comes with a white glove service. So you can see up there that you have uh, site data audits. So many of our customers in the finance industries, life sciences, we do audits for them. Thank you again to the trust team, another shout out uh, for all the work that you do there. So if you have questions or if you're an enterprise customer already today, I urge you to engage us on this as well. So again, if we're talking about network and we're talking about access, some of these things are important to what Zero Trust is. The question is, how would you describe it? We actually have some great white papers that I'll link later in the presentation. We think about it as hyper-lease privilege, strong identity, proxying of access. So what might that look like? I don't know if your organizations have a zero trust strategy, but I want to put this up here in case you need to contextualize it. You can think about it as zones of trust, right? So there are different applications within your organization, an enterprise organization. You're gonna have lower sensitivity workloads. Perhaps it's your work days. Perhaps it's uh, a little bit more sensitive into your financial systems. Maybe you are also a vendor, you're a SaaS PaaS provider. So that's your more, most secure zone of trust you see there in the center. Each one of these uh, circles here is a zone of trust and it's additive security as you're going in. So this is how I would describe zero trust to you in one picture. Now the question is, how do you assert trust? So each one of those rings that you see up there on the screen, that's your strong identity. That's your uh, endpoint sensors. These are the things that you have signal on, signal, right? So. Perhaps you could use AI to make that decision if you train the model. So each one of those perimeters that you saw is a, a boundary, right? So what we're talking about at each one of those boundaries is proxying of some sort of access. This is from the cyber defense matrix. Uh, uh, CISO named Sunil Yu, brilliant man. So we talk about devices, applications, users accessing something, right? Looks a little bit like this, gets super complex, right? How do we make decisions on what can access what in a zero trust model? Absolutely could use Appian. A little bit of a, a proxying service there, right? With our data fabric, with our process modeling. Now, what AI is your organization going to select? Appian, depending on your use case. This is all about the art of the possible. This is about thinking big. It's a new frontier. There were not a lot of hands raised. No one's figured this out. But if you have questions on this type of stuff, reach out to me. Like, I'd love, I would love to talk to you about this. So more on the art of the possible. We love to lead in the industry. So we actually built a SOAR. So that's a security orchestration automation and response platform on top of Appian. We are plugging that into our AI services. Now we're able to tackle something like 350 million events per hour with the scalability of our platform. So click on these articles. It actually has a blueprint. So you can see how you could build uh, out your own within your organization. Safeguarding your customer data and compliance, another great article here. How KPMG and Appian is using Appian to build a privacy app. Check these out. Some of the stuff that we talked about today on Zero Trust and AI, uh, you, can, you can click into this at some point later. We have a Zero Trust uh, blog post that describes how you can talk about that with your security personnel. Transforming your security operations and using automation for adversary emulation. That's a really cool one as well. But I think the coolest one is actually coming up tomorrow. So there's a great conference, securityfrontiers.ai, and we are using AI to build out automated detections. So we talk about real world use cases, we talk about 
things that you might be able to imagine doing, uh, whether that is you know, for your customers or your internal uh, operations. Dylan Williams from our team tomorrow, I urge you to sign up, register, is gonna go through the architecture of how we are able to take 50 TTPs, so tactics, techniques, and protocols used by threat actors against context, things that we have within our environment, could be things like a, an Okta or you know, one of your various vendors, and save 140 hours with a 70% accuracy rate, meaning that those events and detections worked immediately. So for the other piece there, you need the human in the mix. So we want to make sure that, you know, that is a captured point when you're using AI as well. Uh, it's always human plus AI. But we have a couple of other calls to action. Hand this back off to Lewis. Thank you, Andrew. Awesome. Great. So if you're interested in learning more about we, what we spoke about today, you can download the private AI ebook from appian.com from the Resource Center. And also, be sure, if you haven't already, to upgrade your Appian environments to the latest installation, which is 24.1. Uh, this will allow you to take advantage of our latest AI capabilities, such as the Prompt Builder AI skill, which allows you to automate processes using gen er, generative AI directly within your applications. Um, and lastly, if you're interested in more information on the latest in AI developments, there's a QR code up on the screen here. Um, it'll allow you to watch the on-demand webinar for the 2024 AI Outlook Roundtable. So in this webinar, uh, three of our partners from KPMG, AWS, and RSM uh, sit down with Appian's Malcolm Ross and discuss their thoughts on the future of AI, including the risks that it brings, the opportunities it brings, and some of the trends in the industry. So I still see a couple of phones up. I'll leave this up on the screen for another minute. Great. And this is actually our last slide. So thank you for attending this presentation. Um, we have time to take questions. Do, do we have a, a mic to pass around? Awesome. So we have a mic. Does anyone have any questions uh, for either Andrew or I? Right there. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, anonymizing the data using Gen AI as part of a security procedure? Absolutely. Um, could you give a bit of an example of, of the scenario in which you're thinking? Sure, like uh, reviewing medical history, for example, or uh, reviewing PHI information, uh, trying to get information out of a medical record. Yeah, absolutely. So. I just mentioned the Prompt Builder AI skill. Um, it's one of the capabilities of the 24.1 release. One of the things that we've found that generative AI is really successful with is entity recognition. In this case, an entity could be any piece of PHI, a name, a social security number, sensitive health information. Um, you can actually use generative AI to automatically identify these pieces of information within a blob of text, say a medical record. Um, output that information and then either strike using Appian, strike that from the medical record, or maybe even replace it with anonymized, randomized data. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Great, looks like we have one in the back. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, Agustin Rubini from Gartner. So um, I'd like to know if you have a more specific uh, um, definition of, of private AI. Yesterday, we were looking at some of the models that you're using, and uh, it includes some closed models, such as Claude. So just trying to understand, how are you preventing data that is sent to Claude to, to still be called private AI? Yeah, so uh, within the context uh, that we've talked about, here at the conference. It's all about your data, your processes, and attaching an app in AI to that. So when we talk about private, we mean any of the object access patterns that you would already have associated with that data would be attached to that within your use case. So the use of the AI in the top of that triangle. When it's passed in to the model, we spin up with your context in your data and all of your permissions. 
and any of the models that come back from that context and data comes back to you, spins down. So it is uh, specific to you and your use case. So think about it as an isolation bubble. Yeah, and I can add a little bit more detail to that. So in the context, say, of using generative AI through, for example, a cloud model, um, all of that communication stays within, from your Appian environment to that model, it stays within Appian's uh, security and compliance boundaries for our cloud. That's right. Um, additionally, these models are pre-trained, so they don't store any of your data. Um, Appian, using our record security, makes sure that when the uh, query, say, to the model or the, the prompt for the model is being formed, that the user context is applied to make sure that no information that the user shouldn't have access to is included in that prompt sent to the model within Appian security and compliance boundary, the response is returned, um, and that helps prevent uh, data that that user shouldn't have access to from being included in that response as well. Yeah, that's right, and that's an important point, especially uh, when you think about, like, can you try and fool or hallucinate the model, right, by your prompts that you would inject into it, so that's a very important point right there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we, have another question more. With uh, private AI, have you run into problems with the data sets being too small for it to to make a significant difference? Or yeah, there there are certainly cases where a large data set is important, or maybe a customer doesn't have a lot of historical data. Um, it can be a challenge. We do have, with some of our AI skills that use, let's say, deterministic or tr traditional AI, um, they do require a baseline uh, number of documents or emails to train the model. Um, typically, we see customers see success with around you know, 75, 100 examples. However, with generative AI, um, because those baseline pre-trained models have been trained on such massive corpuses of information, um, you can actually use them really effectively within a limited data set on your end. Um, it's a technique called few shot prompting, where essentially you just include three or four examples along with any uh, request to the model, and it can typically resp respond pretty accurately based on just those few examples. I think there's another question here. Um, maybe a little bit closer. Hello. Okay, I can hear you. Okay. Hi. Yeah, so you pre-train the model, and then uh, we start using it. And you said, like, with just few examples, it can start making sense of our data. And as we ask questions, it, does it get more trained to our data? Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the answer refined to generative AI specifically. These are features like the prompt builder, like records chat. Um, the models themselves are actually pre-trained by the, the model provider that we use. Um, Appian's not developing, at least today, these models ourselves natively, um, which is pretty common amongst the industry. Um, as you interact with that model, it's not storing any of your data. It's not changing the model over time. Um, it is simply the model uh, processing your request, returning a response, and then that response being within your Appian application. Got you. So we are just using the model. So yes, it's, that's it's a read-only kind of thing. So we are not really training it. We are only uh, using it. That's correct. And so for, for generative AI, the way that if you need to make a change in how the model is performing, you would just update your prompt within the Appian AI skill. Uh, but you said like like a, a small sample that we have to give to really make it work. What, what is What does that do? Like... 75 or 25 documents that you talk about. Oh, okay. So, so those are for some of the more traditional AI features where you actually are training a machine learning algorithm, specifically our document extraction, uh, email classification, document classification AI skills. Those don't utilize generative AI. They use you know more traditional ML technology where you are actually labeling data and training a model yourself, and that is private to your Appian environment. All right, so that, that's for the traditional one and the general yes. way just did. So that explains, like, um, that answers my next question probably, like, uh, if there is some improvements to that model, how do we use it? Since it's a read-only, you can just give us the more trained model and we start using that to ask questions, right? Yeah, so for the, the other, are, are you referring to any specific feature, the generative AI? Or? No, like, if you're training the model even mm -hmm. more, or like, it's pre-trained, but 
what if you're uh, what if that model gets more trained with more data and uh, we could utilize that by just having the recent version of the model yes yeah, so as you know, new generative AI technologies are introduced. Appian takes advantage of them within the platform. Um, only new objects that you create will change which models that you're used. We'll never like change your models out from under you. Um, anything that you train will like will continue to work the way that it did work. Um, but we do make new models available to customers as as they come online in the platform. Cool. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, any other questions? All right, I know that everyone uh, has to probably get to another session, but I'd like to thank you all for, for attending today. Um, please, as Andrew mentioned, if you have any questions, if you wanna talk about the details of our security offerings, or if you have an AI use case that you'd like to explore more, um, please reach out directly to us. I'm really excited to talk with customers and learn more about your use cases and your questions, so please feel free to reach out to us directly. And thank you. Thank you.